So other ways in which the shadow manifests itself, as I said, are drives, kind of unconscious drives, impulses, relational pattern, patterns, how we behave in certain situations. So all these all this pushed uh, behaviors that are in our unconscious. Now, I think the easiest way actually to spot our shadow is in the relational context. So how we relate to other people. Uh, another option would be to, as Jordan Peterson said, to follow your resentment, which also will lead you to your shadow. But if you follow just the resentment, you're going to just discover some of the impulses and drives that you are having. But you're not going to fully understand the shadow itself and how it plays out in your life. So uh, in this situation, I agree with, with Peterson. Yes, follow your resentment. You're going to learn about your shadow. You're going to learn about this dark side. But the thing is with the, with the shadow, it's not just the dark side. It's not just the awful impulses, awful drives as we, as we label them, but it also contains this protective element, this creative element, something that we are not consciously aware of, something that could push us, push us outside of our comfort zone, right? It's not necessarily bad. So as I was saying, um, we can... I think it is one of the easiest ways, maybe the easiest, the easiest way for, for some people, is to observe ourselves in, in relationships. In psychoanalysis, there is a process called um, transference and counter-transference. In common terms, it's simply a projection. So we project elements of ourselves onto other people, especially the shadow. So what happens is that, again, this theme of what irritates us about other people is actually coming from other shadow that is within us. I think it's just the tip of the iceberg because there are many other things that we can learn about ourselves from, from the relationship with other people. And it's not just um, negative signs, as I was saying, but also different patterns, different opportunities we might be having for growth and development through the relationship. So, for example, um, in terms of projection, we might be seeing the negative signs, which will be irritating to us. Like, it's, it's not uncommon to, to feel like other people are annoying, we don't like other people, there's something we, we, we get frustrated with about someone, especially in closer relationships. But there's also this potential for, for positive development, where we admire something in another person that we think that we don't have. So this is again again the shadow because it's coming from our unconscious. We don't admire things, we, we, I mean, we don't admire, yeah, we don't admire certain things in other people or characteristics for the sake of admiring them, but there's this unconscious element. Why do, why do we admire certain things, right? Why do we get irritated with certain things? I think once we start investigating this causes for why we, extend ourselves towards other people. That's how we can learn about our shadow. So the opposite process to, to, to that is that of something called counter-transference. So in this dynamic, we basically reply to someone projecting onto us, which is a big, big thing. Like, what can we do when we feel misunderstood or unseen by someone? What can we do when someone projects their stuff onto us? And the common reaction, two common reactions uh, to that process, which again involve our shadow, is either engaging on this unconscious level, so we project straight away back onto them, right? Or we identify with this projection. So, for example, to use, the same, to, to use the same example as I said before about clumsiness, let's say I believe that I am clumsy, but someone projects on me their clumsiness. They, they get irritated with me for, for being clumsy, for not being clumsy. It doesn't matter. They project onto me. So what happens is that I start engaging with this transference, as, it, as, as it's properly called, with this projection, and... I start to push my shadow into the interaction. So then I start getting irritated. I start pointing out fingers, or oh, you are doing this, you are doing that. 
it's quite messy relationship in that case because there's no conscious engagement. So that's that's a one uh, one option for responding to that that projection towards us. And the second one is identifying with the projection. So if someone projects on me their clumsiness, I start to identify with this unconscious thing, and suddenly I believe that I'm clumsy. So again, messy relationship, not true. Engage only engages this unconscious drives.